we are moving on in our study on praying for our husbands. And today, we're going to be focusing on the Word of God. Our verse is a little bit long. It's Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. And it's just an incredible and encouraging promise that reminds us that God's Word is always going to act, even if it doesn't seem like it is right now. It says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth, making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purposes for which I sent it. So we have this picture of God's word going out, just like the rain and the rain's always going to accomplish. It's always going to water the earth. It's always going to help the crops grow, things like that. It will not return empty. God's word does not return to him empty. And so we can be praying for that word to be filling our husbands because we know it's guaranteed to produce fruit. So let's pray today, first of all, for God to fill our husbands with a hunger for his word. The Bible says that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And we should be praying for the desire to be in the word of God. I love Psalm 1. It says, On his law, he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water. And that's kind of a picture of the person who's really filled with the word of God. He's rooted and by streams of water, kind of always nourished. The word of God is always nourishing him. And that's a prayer that we can pray for our husbands. And the last part of that psalm says, whatever he does prospers. And that's a great blessing to pray over your husband. And that can come from him being filled with the word of God. So a few specific things we can be praying for in terms of our husband's um, relationship to God through the word of God, through the Bible, is that God's word would guide him. We have Psalm 119, 105. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So God can use his word to be guiding all of your husband's decisions. We can be praying that our husbands would be obedient to God's word. Because James says, you know, it's no good to just hear the word and then forget about it. Right? He says that anybody who hears the word and then forgets about it, he's like the guy who looks in a mirror and then, you know, a minute later forgets what he looked like. So we should be praying that our husbands would be not just in the word and studying the word, but obedient to the word. And then we can be praying that they would be encouraged from it, convicted by it. A big one, too, is that they would handle it correctly. A lot of people use the Bible in a lot of wrong ways. And, you know, there's not time to go into all of those. But um, just a couple examples, you know, making the Bible say things that aren't there, taking verses out of context and things like that. Let's be praying for our husbands to have the wisdom to know how to handle the word of God well. And last, let's pray for God to be speaking to our husbands through the word. And this leads into tomorrow's topic where we're going to be asking God to just fill our husbands with wisdom and all the decisions they need to make. But before we move on to that, let's go ahead and pray now. God, I pray that my husband would have just a deep love for your word. I pray that he would submit to your word and hunger for your word. I pray, God, that when he studies the Bible, you would open his mind to understand what you have to teach him. I pray that he would be humble before you and that you would even bring him conviction while he's reading your word and that you would use the Bible to be guiding him into how he can please you even more fully. I pray that you would use your word to help him grow in his faith, help him to love others more, help him to be the man you want him to be, help him to make good decisions in, in his life and in our family and our marriage. And I ask that you would protect him from incorrectly handling your word too, that you would give him the discernment and the wisdom to know how to just accurately read and study your word and that he would always have the burning desire to be in your word more and more. Amen.